Okay, let's look at the intensity of sound. Sound carries energy like all waves. In fact, that's what a wave is. A wave is really just energy traveling through a medium. And we measure not the energy of sound waves, however, that's kind of difficult to measure, but we measure the intensity, not the energy. We measure the intensity of a sound wave. And the intensity is defined as the power divided by the area. So here P is the power, A is the area, and uh, power, if you remember, is energy per time. We had that back in a, I don't know, a previous chapter. Energy per time, so it is in units of joules per second, uh, or that's equal to a watt, one watt. There's one joule per second. And so the units then of power are going to be watts per square meter. An important thing to recognize is that if I have a source of sound here, say it's a, I don't know, a speaker that's creating some sound, that uh, this energy is spread out over a large area as you go farther and farther away from it. So the power is measured in joule per seconds, and the area is the area of this surface. So the area is the surface of uh, over which the sound is spread. And of course that area is dependent upon the radius. So if you imagine this is part of a bigger sphere, the area of a sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared. You don't need to know that equation, but you do need to know that the area is proportional to the radius of the sphere squared. And so what that does is that if I double my radius, for example, that's going to quadruple the area. And so if I move two times as far away from an object, then that means I'm going to quadruple the area over which it, it's uh, over which it spread, that means that my intensity will drop by a factor of four. So moving even just a little bit away from a source of sound can greatly decrease the intensity of that sound. There are a couple of important reference points that you'll need to know. The threshold of hearing, this is the intensity, the lowest intensity of sound that you can hear, and it's equal to 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. And then the second thing is the threshold of pain. And the threshold of pain is 1.0 uh, watts per square meter. The first thing I want you to recognize is that we are 12 orders of magnitude in the sounds that you can hear between the threshold of hearing and the threshold of pain. That is remarkable that the human ear can hear over so many levels of intensity. I can hear a, a sound at one level at the threshold of hearing, and then a sound that's, uh, what is 10 to the 12th? A trillion times louder before I actually hear pain, before I have pain. I think that's right. Yeah, 10 to the 6th is a million. Yes, a trillion times louder until I actually experience pain. We'll see a similar effect with the eye, that the eye has great sensitivity over a wide range of brightnesses. Uh, both of these are dependent on the person and the frequency. If you don't believe me, go to your frequency generator that I showed you earlier and put in a sound of 400 hertz and then put in a sound of, I don't know, a couple thousand hertz and you'll see a much greater difference in your tolerance for that sound that the higher frequency tends to to cause pain much more quickly. So it's dependent on the person and the frequency of sound to which that person is most sensitive. Uh, if we assume that the source is a point source, which is what we will do, The intensity can be written like this. If the intensity is power over area, then that's going to be power over 4 pi r squared. I've already shown you this. Where here r, I'll do a capital R, 
the four pi r squared, where r is the radius of the sphere. It assumes that it is uh, that the source is a point source, and that the sound emanates outward in a radially symmetric way. That means it goes outward in, in the same direction, or in all directions, in a similar way, so that you have these these sound fronts. And as I said before, if this radius is r and this radius is 2r, then I'm going to have one quarter the intensity that I had before. So remember, the intensity is proportional to 1 over r squared. So what happens to i as r increases? i decreases because a increases. And this relationship, the mathematical relationship, is called the inverse square law. We've seen this before a bunch of times. In fact, the inverse square law is very common in nature. And it's common in nature because spherical symmetry is common in nature. Uh, the inverse square law, i is proportional to 1 over r squared. That i is, is uh, related to the inverse and to the square of the radius. As I said, this is only true if the sound is emitted in all directions and not so with megaphones or speakers where the sound is actually focused in a particular direction.